Let's go find out. Hey, Geo Nerds, in a recent awesome video from Walkabout with Rob on the history of Mount Cooper, he did a great job of showing you why it's there and how long it's been there and its history. We're going to have a look at the rocks, the geology, the thing that makes Mount Cooper a mountain. Half a billion years of it up there, and it's, it's, I think it's quite interesting anyway. So let's get to it. Remember, if you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. Let's rock. Portman Mark Visual with the CBD and ready for sun. Stay out of three, we're visual ready. 83, roger, expect descent uh, approaching TV towers. Down we have 83. So in 83, traffic, OCTA is uh, Hotel Tango Victor. Well, here we are, folks. We've got the T Rocks chopper fired up across the pathetic wheel of Brisbane. We're heading over to Mount Cooper. Everyone knows where Mount Cooper is. It's got the TV towers on it. Have a bit of a stop here. There we go. There's Mount Cooper over there. Well, actually, that's not Mount Cooper. Uh, that's the summit. That whole thing's called the Taylor Range. And uh, that's Mount Cooper, where the little restaurant is that has awesome ice cream. Coffee's a bit ordinary, but the ice cream's fantastic. Uh, if you can get a car park. Uh, but anyway, if you go during the week, you'll be laughing. If you've got any friends come to stay in Brisbane, take them up there. Take them on a Saturday or a Sunday. So that's Mount Cooper there, and we're looking across the whole Taylor Range. You see the quarry there. thought we'd pull back. There's uh, four peaks there. There's Constitution Hill, which is just in front of us. There's the summit, which has got Channel 10 on it. There's Mount Cooper. Uh, which has got the restaurant on it, and there's a place called The Pinnacle. And there's Brisbane, not very far away. Uh, and uh, oh, I can see my house from here. Oh, she leaves in the guttering. Anyway, let's have a look at the rocks. Well, folks, what we have here is the, a map of the surface geology of Mount Cutha. This is the inaugural granite intrudes up to the summit there where Channel 10 is. This zone here, they call it the metamorphic zone. That's the area that's been contact metamorphosed by touching that hot granite. And the rest of it you see there is fill up. That's where the gold mines are, by the way. They're all in that area there. They're everywhere, but they're the ones that actually found gold. So, um, yeah, this is another little area of metamorphosis. And there is more than that is because the quarry's obviously mining that stuff as well. Uh, it's... All metamorphic. Well, I was pretty excited about that. Thing, looking at the gold mines, and I'll show you a little bit more of that at the end. But uh, the uh, gold mines, they say, weren't very successful. These are the spots on the road where we, we're we going to take our video today, so you can have a look at. I just thought I'd point them out to you in case you want to go and check it out yourself. It's pretty safe. Um, I don't do silly things when you're doing that stuff, so the road's not going to, cars aren't going to get you. So we talk about this bunyip phyllite. How, what the hell is phyllite? Phyllite is a sedimentary rock that's been metamorphosed, but not particularly hardly. It's still a fairly loose shale, but it is not a shale. So this stuff started out 4,000 feet under the ocean. Um, it was uplifted, and that when it was metamorphosed, and then later on, We'll look at the time frame soon. The inaugural granites intruded into it, as you can see, and that skin of Hornfelds is those metamorphic rocks. Now, those rocks were cooked and pressurized, as you can imagine. When that granite extruded in there, it pushed outwards on the rocks under pressure, but it also cooked them. So that stuff they mined down in that quarry is hard stuff. You hit it with a hammer, it rings like a bell. It's truly great rock, and that's why it's used all over Brisbane. And it just happens to be conveniently, because the biggest cost of mining, quarrying rock is transporting it. it. Happens to be right under our feet, so it's a really good. So there you go. Uh, see the Brisbane tuff there? That nap's not particularly to scale. Um, let's have a look at the ages of this. So these rocks were laid down. Uh, I, I rounded off to half a billion years, but it wasn't half a billion years. About 400 million years ago, in the Denovian Silurian period. So let's have a look at some of the uh, rocks with the, our old mate here, of course. Here we are here, way down here, 420 or so million years ago, they were laid down. Um, the inaugural granite is here. It's Triassic. 
So it was 200 million years before this stuff got cooked. And it well and truly got cooked, I assure you. So we're just going to now have a quick look at some of the evidence that this got hot. Because this really did get hot. So here's a magnetic anomaly map of the area. And you can see this shows you what direction the magnetic poles are pointing. The granite stands out. It really does. Here is a radioactive isotope map of the area. It shows you uranium, thorium or potassium. It tells me nothing, but my god it looks good, doesn't it? But anyway, I don't know much about radioactive isotopes in rocks. I should learn more, eh? Well folks, today we're up here on Mount Kutha. We're on the boundary between the Anogra granite and the Brisbane Phyllites. And we're just having a look today to see what we can see. And already I can see some pretty interesting rocks. This one, which is sitting there, is a piece of granite. This is a piece of granite from Anogra. Now, there's a lot of it here. So where we are here, which is only about I reckon we're about uh, 800 metres from Channel 10. We're well into the granite here. Everything you see here is either granite or decomposed granite, or soils that have been made from decomposed granite. But that's a nice solid piece of granite. I'll just get my hammer and give that a smack. As you can see, listen to that. Nothing soft about that. Let's give it a bit of pinch off the edge here. Typical iron structure, beautiful crystalline structure of granite, big pieces of feldspar and other things in there. And uh, that's typical of the orange of the inaugural granite. So let's. Um, See if we can find some more. That's a nice piece, actually. There you go. There's a nice cleave line in it. It was already weakened. I could see that. You can see where the iron's been leaching out of it as the water's got into it over the years. Anyway, don't destroy what you came to enjoy. This stuff here is rotten. So it was granite. Well, we got visitors. But it's just been turned into absolute garbage. It's just rotten, it's breaking apart. You hear of the term decomposed granite, you hear it quite a lot, it's great for driveways. That's the sort of stuff they crush. Anyway, it's definitely not shale. Let's go down the hill a bit further, see if we can find the boundary of the granite and the shale. Well folks, here we are up on Mount Kutha, still, and we're still within the granite zone. We're a little further down, we're at the entrance to the uh, Makalata track. And uh, the one I wanted to show you here was the granite that sticks into this car park. A little tiny car park here. Let me just grab you and point you down there so you can see what we're looking at. That is good old Inogra granite. Hard, crystalline, nothing rotten about that, I assure you. So yeah, it's all through here, all through this car park. And keeping in mind, this granite is 230 million years old. So it's doing pretty well. I think you can see the reason why the summit end of Mount Cooper is higher than the Mount Cooper end of the Taylor Range, I should say. It's because it's harder, quite a lot harder. Even though the metamorphics down the other end are still quite hard, this is harder. Well folks, here we are. If you see behind me here, up on that cliff, you'll see some different looking rocks. They look a bit clayish. In fact, they're a part of the uh, Brisbane Philite. It's an argillite, which is a sort of a mudstone. 
and uh, yeah this is below the boundary with the granite we're about 200 meters up from uh, Simpsons Falls but this stuff here you can break up in your hand is definitely not um, yeah it's definitely not granite it's not even decomposing granite it's just argillite I've got my hammer here, let's go and smack a bit, hey? Because we can. Unfortunately, that bloody uh, thorny shit's growing all through here, the organic bar boy. That makes it a bit interesting. I'm just going to spin you around so you can see what's going on in front of us here. Let's just smack this. Just listen to the sound. See how it goes past. Oh, that's hard to like. Poorly formed. Mud stones. Iron rich. Beautiful stuff. If you want to make clay pikes or something like that. But that's not great. Let's just walk up the road here a few hundred metres. Spin you back again, guys. So there we go. I wish you could fight your way through the organic barbed wire to get to this. Just now I've got my foot tangled in it. That's cutting my leg. Really? It's all right. I'll survive. <laughs> what a bushman. Anyway, so of course on the side of the Mount Cooper Road, we get up to a little creek. And this little creek is unnamed, but it's a north flowing tributary of West Ithaca Creek and it flows up to the to the summit to the back of the summit doesn't go too far from here I think but it's really really overgrown with uh, lantana and all sorts of other nasty things but the rock here you've just seen me walk that distance it's not that far listen to the difference I'll spin you around There's our rock. It's like eating steel because it's granite. So that's the boundary, folks, between the Brisbane Philites, which make up the, uh, let's say, the southern part of Mount Cutha, and the Inaugural Granites, which of course make up the northern part of the summit of the Taylor Range. So. There's a vast difference. The geology here is very stark. But if you come in here and you've got time, you can wander around, look at rocks, bring a hammer with you, smack a few rocks. They get carried away. They go dig holes. But uh, there's a lot to be seen. So I'm going to put a few maps up for you now and we'll have a talk about origins of this because it's 200 or so million years old at the summit. You know, over at Mount Cutha, it's half a billion years old. Let's have a better look at that before we get run over. So folks, when we talk about metamorphics in the contact zone, we're talking about this schist. Now you've seen this all over Brisbane. This is on Coronation Drive. And these, this dark rock with the little white stripes in it uh, is everywhere in Brisbane. And it all comes from here, the Mount Cutha Quarry, right? So this is where they mined into that metamorphics or quarried into it. And they've been doing it for nearly 100 years and it's still being used. Uh, this, by the way, is a time lapse. That is a tunnel they dug through to the uh, centenary tunnel and took the spoil from the TBMs. So yeah, it's an interesting bit of history there. Um, so what have we got? This, here's uh, some lighter. There's the quarry. It's a huge quarry coming up. You can see this Mount Cutha area is covered in trails. They're everywhere. It's a great place to go and have a look around, by the way. Pretty safe. Bit of wildlife up there, be right. There's the Channel 10 uh, tower, and this is the same thing from the north now. But I've wrapped the uh, geology so you can see the pink is the uh, granite. Uh, then we get into the contact zone. Unfortunately, the light grey and the grey don't really show up very well. And you can see the whole 
how the landscape has evolved as it's slowly eroding through the Brisbane, the Bunya Philite at the bottom end here. Um, by the way, that pad over in the background is that big reservoir at Kenwall. Amazing place, actually. You should go and check that out. Well, I was pretty excited about this next lot of mine shafts, but to be honest, I'm not that excited now because this is the one that has already been found. Uh, this is mine site number 10. I'm sure there's a name of this one. It actually looks like it goes down and then comes back up. Okay, look at this. Here we are already. Geez, that's so close to the car park. Well, folks, here's a zoom in of one of the mine shafts Cam was looking in, and these are quartz veins. And that's what the miners were looking for because the mineralization in phyllite, natively, there's nothing in it. However, when that uh, Anogra granite made that contact zone of those horn fells, geothermal fluids got pushed up through the quartz, through the uh, phyllite, over and over again. As endless eons wheeled and passed, time and the pure essences of heaven, the moisture of the earth, the powers of the sun and the moon, all worked upon a certain rock, old as creation. And it brought minerals with it. Now, this is a bit of phyllite over at Red Hill. And uh, if you have a look, you can see the quartz veining just starting. Now, this is heavily quartz veined. This is right on the side of the road. Well, don't go over smacking the quartz out of it. I don't, there's no gold in it. I've already checked it. So you can see the quartz vein just starting here. It's running underneath that retaining wall, which by the way, is also made out of phyllite. And look at the, the quartz in this, this is huge. These, these veins are, some of these veins are like half a meter thick, but see how white it is? It's not particularly heavily mineralized. Uh, the dirtier it looks, the better it is generally. If it's got more black, which is manganese, or red, which is iron. Uh, I'll show you a bit of gold ore now, and it's dirty looking stuff, you know, but Good, don't get me wrong, it's really good. And don't forget folks, check out these awesome YouTubers videos. You got Cam, Rob, and John. Links are in the description. Those videos are well worth checking out. Give them a go. Now I know an old lady who swallowed a spider. It wriggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. Hey GeoNerds, I thought I'd spend a little more time on this map for you. I've never really explained it well. This is a magnetic pole map, not strength, not intensity, but direction. And when a rock is melted and it freezes, the magnetic poles in that rock freeze, pointing towards where the Earth's magnetic field is at that time. Now the Earth's magnetic field moves continuously and the time I've had a pilot's license has moved about 15 degrees because the magnetic poles keep moving. However, they also reverse from time to time. So when you look at this, the colours you're seeing are not about strength, it's about the direction the poles are pointing in these rocks. And as you can see, that big melt area in the uh, Anoga granite, the, mag the Earth's magnetic field was in a very different place when that rock froze than it was when the phyllites and all the other rocks around it were, d were put down. So anyway, it's a way of telling different intrusives. There's one coming next week. I'm doing a video next week on uh, Mount Jura up in uh, Ipswich. And there's some really nice uh, trachyte intrusions up there. And it's really clear in the magnetics. It's really interesting. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you all you new subscribers. I love it. It's fantastic. I appreciate it. I appreciate all subscribers coming back. Comments, really enjoying them. I'm a big boy. I can take negative feedback. It's all right. Anyway, you know what I'm going to say. Keep, Keep rocking. T-Rocks rock. out. out.